this might be controversial. Some people might disagree with that, but that is truly how I feel. I would have taken this song over a couple songs that are actually on the album. You're like, oh my gosh, we would have never put this together if she hadn't put out this vault track, obviously. This might be another hot take. I will never skip this song. If it comes on, I will not skip it. One of the best songs Taylor has ever written. How big is this vault? guys welcome back to the channel it's Nina if you are new here welcome I'm so happy to have you and if you're not new thanks for coming back as you can see we are going to be ranking every single vault song that Taylor Swift has released up until now usually I make coffee for these sit down type of videos but I've already had coffee today and it is like two o'clock and I cannot cannot have coffee this late so we are opening up a poppy not sponsored I just really really love poppy I have this cute little cup it is so hot in California. I am quite literally sweating. For those of you who don't know, I moved to a different house and my room is upstairs and it gets to about 82 degrees up here. This is quite refreshing. Okay, so I came up with the idea for this video literally like a few days ago and I can't believe I haven't done something like this yet. I haven't really talked about the vault songs as a whole and so I'm like really excited to just go through every single one of these and tell you guys my ranking. Quick disclaimer, I love all all of the songs obviously I think all of them are so good and I'm so happy that Taylor had a second chance to release all of these on the Taylor's versions and I can only imagine how many more amazing songs that are gonna come from this from 1989 reputation debut but so far there are 24 vault songs and 23 I need to check and see how many so I don't miss any. I literally just went off of my memory. I'm like 99% sure I have all of the vault songs written down, but I need to double check my work just in case y'all come for me for missing one. Oh, hmm. Okay, I don't know if people count Ronin as a vault song, but I will not be including Ronin because I don't think it belongs in any ranking videos just because the content of the song is so sad and like sentimental and just does not belong in like a ranking video. So if that is counted, that's 24. So I do have all the songs written down. So that makes for 23 songs I'm gonna be ranking today. Also, this is just my opinion, my own opinion for which songs I like the best and the ones that I relate to the most. So this is not to say that if I put anything on the bottom that it's not a good song because everyone has different songs that they relate to. But feel free to comment what you think of my ranking, if you relate, if you have much different opinions. I'd love to see your guys' ranking in the comments, but let's get started, shall we? So first coming in at number 23 is Bye Bye Baby from The Fearless Vault. I do feel like this song is kind of just like put at the bottom by default, but I actually really love this song ever since I found like the demo recording of the original song so long ago, almost 10 10 years ago, I found this song. I've had it downloaded on my phone ever since then. So when Taylor went back and re-recorded the Fearless Vault, I had known about like most of them. I think I only didn't know Mr. Perfectly Fine and Don't You, but I really enjoyed listening to this song re-recorded because of just how young she sounds in the demo and how much more amazing that she made it the second time around. Her voice sounds so good. She did change some of the lyrics from the original demo. Altogether, I thought she did such a good job kind of like reinventing this song. And again, if the songs are lower on the list, I think it's just because they're songs that are just like that I like better doesn't make it a bad song so sadly bye bye babies at the very bottom but I really do like that song a lot next we have we were happy and similar to bye bye baby I found this demo on YouTube or I just like would look up unreleased Taylor Swift songs in my spare time and like after 1989 came out and there was like no songs Taylor was releasing for like ever like bef between 1989 and reputation there was just such a long drought that I just was looking for any new Taylor Swift content that I hadn't heard before so that's when I like discovered all the unreleased songs and we were happy was on there there was 
was two different versions. There was like a full demo and then there was like a piano demo and I listened to both of those and I learned this song on guitar before it came out and everything. And so I think it was such like a nostalgic experience to listen to the Fearless Vault tracks the second time around after never thinking we would have like a fully produced version of them. I think this one's just really cute and very country, like the whole storytelling thing. Again, I had heard these songs before and just like the rest of the Fearless album, hearing them again in Taylor's like older voice was just like a very full circle experience. So I love this song, but again, not one of like my most favorite songs. Okay, moving up the list at number 21. This might be controversial, but Foolish One from the Speak Now Vault. I actually, I think I love all of these songs from the Speak Now Vault, but they're all so different. I feel like with Fearless and Red, the songs like really fit with that era, that album. I feel like the, the Speak Now Vault is kind of all over the place, which isn't a bad thing. And I'm really glad that she did this because it shows us that she was experimenting with her sound in the Speak Now era, really wanting to break out of the bubble of country and just like, make that crossover, blur the lines between country, pop, like even with some rock undertones with Speak Now. And so this one really felt like it could have been in the Fearless vault. I think it's, it's funny to me because I feel like out of all of the songs in the Speak Now vault, this is the one that I would have related to the most if it was put on the actual Speak Now album in 2010, just because like it's so like middle school, high school coded, like very hopeless romantic, very like like sending love letters, unrequited love. It just like fits so well with like all of the songs from Fearless. It's just a really sweet song, very simple, just like really funny. Maybe I'm putting it lower to the bottom because it just really called me out, but I think my favorite line from this song is when she says, you are not the exception. I feel like all of us needed to hear that back in 2010. At number 20, we have Run, a song that she re-recorded with Ed Sheeran, and it's actually funny to me when he came out and was talking about this during the release of read Taylor's version and saying when they first wrote songs together this was the first one that they wrote together and then they wrote everything has changed when Taylor told him like oh one of the songs is going on my album you know back in 2012 he assumed it was this one so it's funny to me that Ed Sheeran in his brain was like oh the obvious answer was run over everything has changed and I feel like run is kind of an extension of that song again just a very sweet and simple song but not one that I listen to a lot I would say out of all of the Red Vault songs, this one I probably listen to the least. Not to say that I don't listen to it at all because I obviously listen to Taylor Swift almost every single day. I don't have anything bad to say about these songs or like any real reason that they're lower on the list other than there's some songs that I really like more. Okay, moving up, we have at number 19, That's When. And again, I had heard the original demo of this song. When I saw that she was putting this one in the vault, I was shocked, like on the floor, so excited because this was my one of my favorite unreleased songs that I had downloaded on my phone and I would listen to it all the time. And the original demo is much more country, but I actually really like what she did with the song. Definitely a song I listen to more in the summertime, but again, so nostalgic because I can't tell you how many times I listened to this mp3 file that I downloaded and I made my own album art for it. So I think the experience of the Fearless Vault for for me was so different than the other ones because it just felt like a long awaited moment of hearing these songs like officially released instead of just listening to like a grainy very low audio quality demo. This might be another hot take but my next one is When Emma Falls in Love. I think maybe I just need to spend more time with these songs and I'm sure this ranking will change and it does like all the time. My favorite part of this song is the chorus like the first two lines is so good and I I love the way that she sings the word Cleopatra. Cleopatra grew up in a small town. I love like the storytelling of this song. And I always love a song where Taylor is kind of like the narrator rather than the first person. I think she has such a talent for providing like an outside third person perspective of certain
certain situations. This one is definitely more country with like the storytelling element to it and also the production. I can tell that she made it a little less country but it sounds like it could have been super country which is probably why she didn't put it on Speak Now. I feel like that album leaned much more towards pop than country. She had like a few songs that had like violin, mean, and stuff like that but maybe this one just got cut because it was like too country. Next we have Forever Winter. This one, I think when I first heard it, I didn't really realize what the song was about, but like because of how upbeat it sounds, but then the more you listen to it, it's like absolutely devastating and heartbreaking, like the lyrics and everything. I find that this one get, got stuck in my head a lot. Like the melody is very catchy, and I think Taylor is so good at taking like the most heartbreaking lyrics and putting them to like an upbeat, catchy melody. I'll be summer sun for you forever. Like that one always gets stuck in my head. I definitely listen to the Red Vault more so in the fall, in the winter. I think, again, I go through seasons where I will listen to one album more than the others. Obviously right now it's Speak Now because of Speak Now Taylor's version. I really like to listen to Red and 1989 during Christmas time because I feel like that's when those albums came out. I know that 1989 feels like a summer album, but to me, because it came out in the end of October, so I mostly listen to it like all of November and December of 2014. So for me, I associate it with like Christmas time. Anyways, moving on. In spot number 16, we have Babe. When this song originally came out and Taylor was featured on it with Sugarland, I had it on repeat back in 2018. I listened to it so much. It was probably one of the most listened to songs that year. So I was really, really excited that she was gonna be doing an entire version of it for Red Taylor's version. But I have to say, I enjoy listening to the Sugarland version a little bit better. I I'm not sure I really like the production of this version as much as I like the older version. I think I like it to be a little bit more country without all of like the background vocals and the more pop production, but that's just personal preference. But again, I like the song itself, which is why this one is kind of in the middle. Okay, moving up the list, we have Mr. Perfectly Fine, probably like the biggest bop from the Fearless Vault. This was one that I never heard the demo to so I had nothing to compare it to which is why I think this is one of my favorites from the Fearless Vault because it was just like something so new and I just love how this song is so tongue-in-cheek very sarcastic and just very fearless Taylor just being like this cutesy little song but also being like so sassy and like passive aggressive. Also I always love a key change when it gets to the last chorus so I think I really like that about this song and it was just like kind of like the ringleader of the Fearless Vault. Next we have Castles Crumbling from the Speak Now Vault. I think this song was one of like the most like introspective and kind of showed us the most of what was going through Taylor's mind during the Speak Now era. I feel like we didn't get this big of a glimpse into her life at that point. All we knew was like mostly about the heartbreak and the relationships because that was the era that Taylor became this like serial dater in the eyes of the tabloids and like the news outlets and I just don't think we saw how much that affected her back then. And so hearing this song now, it just like hits a lot different because all we saw was like long live and sparks fly and these like really upbeat singles. And this album still does have really sad, deeply emotional songs, but not so much like this one that is like very much about her biggest insecurity, which is, you know, what people think about her as a person rather than like the relationships she was having and like her and her career was never really talked about in this way and I love that she had Haley Williams on it their voices sound so good together I feel like it hits a lot different her being older now and more mature and looking back on this time in her life I think this song would have made me really sad if it had come out in 2010 um because it's it's hitting hard now at number 13 we have nothing new featuring Phoebe Bridgers which I was lucky enough to see performed live in Nashville with Phoebe and Taylor. This song was so highly relatable when it first came out. 
and now, obviously. This was a mature song for Taylor to write at the time that Red was released. Again, I feel like it's these introspective songs that she didn't like put on the album that didn't make the cut, which is so interesting. It was almost like she was like afraid to let people know how she really felt about herself. That's something that I've just been noticing with these vault releases. Like they're much more vulnerable like internally than just like her feelings about a relationship she had way back then. And I feel like Nothing New and Castle's Crumbling are like sister songs because it's very much Taylor's fear and these are in two different eras, like two years apart. It's like, will they still like me? How long am I gonna be relevant for before they turn against me again? And she has like been knocked down and gotten back up so many times over the years and every single time she comes back, it's stronger. And so I think her own resiliency proves she will always come back, you know? Like, we're not going anywhere. We, being the Swifties, and just everybody that has supported her over the years. Like, imagine that in 2010 and 2012, her thinking like, oh, this is it. This is my peak, I'm done. And then now, seeing her on the Eras tour, just like being at the top of her game. She has never been more famous. She has never been more successful. And she has never had more of a positive public opinion ever, which is crazy, like literally crazy. And as somebody in their 20s, nothing new hits hard. And so I think we can all learn something from Taylor having written this song at 22 and looking at how far she's come since then. So anyways, moving up the list, we have You All Over Me. I think the songwriting in this song is like on another level. Like the lyrics, especially in the verses, are so poetic. Although Taylor's always had that, I think it shines through specifically in this song. Of course, the hook is like my favorite thing ever, and the fact that it relates to clean. No amount of freedom gets you clean. I still have got you all over me. So good. I just really love when we hear these vault tracks and they connect to songs that she's written in the future, and you're like, oh my gosh, we would have never put this together if she hadn't put out this vault track, obviously. I think that also happens in other vault tracks. For example, in Foolish One, she says like, it's delicate. And it's like, did she, she obviously wrote that before Reputation. So she took that from a song she never released and brought back that idea. I feel like that probably happened here. And it's so interesting how her previous writing can inspire her to write new songs. She's a genius. At number 11, we have I Can See You. This song was shocking to say the least when I first heard it, just because it sounds nothing like something that would be on Speak Now because of like that rock heavy guitar part, the lyrics. Like I cannot believe Fearless Taylor wrote this song. It's insane. I say Fearless Taylor because it's always like the album before Taylor that writes the next album. So like she wrote Speak Now during the Fearless era. So she must've have written the song when she was like 18 or 19, which is crazy. It's such a bop. It's so good. Melodically and production wise, I think this song is like so different and you can tell that she was really like pushing the boundary here and you can tell that her mother probably just said that cannot go on the album. That is not appropriate, <laughs> which is so funny. We're seeing so many like memes of Andrea back then making sure Taylor was like not putting out too aggressively inappropriate songs because at the time she had a very young audience and now her audience is like all ages and I feel like people like me that have grown up with Taylor are now older and so I feel like now that she's like 32, 33, finally this song can be released from the vault and it's just, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that it is because it's such a good song. The video was so good and just such a good representation of Taylor reclaiming her art. The fact that she included Taylor Lautner and Joey King. It was just 10 out of 10, 13 out of 10. Moving up the list, we have The Very First Night, which is so good. And the funny thing is like, when I heard this song and Message in a Bottle from The Vault, they sounded very similar, very similar vibes to me. And they both are so fun. Both are bops. 
I think I like Message in a Bottle a little bit more than this one, but this one is also so good and so fun. I only have fond memories of, you know, bopping with my friends to this song when it came out and just like, it's such, it's so fun. I keep saying that, it is fun. I think songs like this are so, first of all, catchy. And also she has a great hook. I just think like I'm obsessed with these type of songs, but it's because she's like perfected the pop formula. She's got the killer chorus, the melody, everything about it is so catchy and it just gets stuck in your head and it's like serotonin. So that's why it's that high. I don't have like a ton to say about the song other than just like the way that it makes me feel is why it's so high. Okay, moving up the list, we have Don't You, which is my favorite song from the Fearless Vault. It is so high because I just feel like it's so relatable and I feel like it was the most relatable song from the Fearless Vault and just felt so, so deeply. <laughs> it's just a very emotional song. I had never heard it before. I never heard a demo. I never heard any unreleased version of it. So I think that's why I also appreciate it more. This one also kind of gives back to December vibes, just kind of like running into somebody that you used to know very well, or just like a very nostalgic, like reminiscent song, but like in a way that's like emotional and very longing, I guess. And I feel like I'm a person that's kind of drawn to those types of songs. I don't know. Just as somebody who is a writer and like somebody who likes to kind of look back and reminisce, these are the songs that get me the most. Moving up the list at number eight, we have I Bet You Think About Me. I love this song so much. I love the music video. I love to play it on guitar. I just think it's like such a fun song and it's also very tongue in cheek and I love when Taylor does these like petty type of song and there's nothing better than her writing a song about somebody just kind of being like I bet you think about me every time you think about this or this and I think that's so true for me because I feel like because Taylor Swift is my entire life <laughs> Essentially, I don't go a single day without listening to Taylor Swift, thinking about what is Taylor Swift doing, the Eras tour, like literally like I see Taylor Swift, my CDs, like my decor, this literally like my half my wardrobe is Taylor Swift. So I just know because Taylor Swift is so prominent in pop culture right now, anyone who like hates me has had some like interaction with me or even people that don't hate me uh, even, even people i've just met briefly people that have come in and out of my life i just know whenever they hear taylor swift or see something about taylor swift they're thinking about me even if they don't want to which brings me great joy and i feel like that is the feeling that taylor swift is getting across in this song and why i love it so much next we have one from the lover vault and hopefully fingers crossed we will get more eventually all the girls you loved before this came out the day before the era's tour started it was just so fun because i was like screaming this song leaked on tiktok as well as some other stuff from lover i never thought she would release it and so the fact that she released it oh my god it's so good like i can't believe this was not on the actual album like i cannot believe it hopefully we'll get need soon because i like that one even more and i like this one a lot the vocals are just insane in this song i just wish this this was on the Lover album when it first came out. I would have taken this song over a couple songs that are actually on the album. But yeah, when we first heard this song in our hotel room in Arizona the day before the concert, we were just like screaming. It was just like the best way to begin that entire weekend. Um, and she still hasn't played it as a surprise song, so as of today, July 21st. So we'll see, she probably will uh, very soon. Okay, moving up the list, we have Electric Touch, which is my second favorite song from the Speak Now Vault and one that I think is way underrated at the moment. Hello? I have a question for you. Okay. How do you wash the blue crewneck so you don't want to fire? Well, you want to hand wash it or put it on delicate and then hang dry. Yeah, just be careful. Definitely put it on delicate. I think you should be fine. Definitely do not put it in the dryer. Should I like put it on like the hand wash setting? Um, turn it inside out. Yes, and then put it on hand wash or delicate. And make sure okay. it's on cold. Okay, yes. Talk to you later. Thank okay, you. Bye. bye. So if you're wondering how to wash your blue crew vac, that's how. But yes, I absolutely love this song. And I think, again, this song is so different from anything else that she did. And it's 
very like 2000s feels like it should be in like an episode of one tree hill the fact that she brought fallout boy onto the song it just made total sense and when they sing the second pre-chorus when they just like any time that they're singing together is just like absolutely amazing the harmonies in this song are so good the chorus is hard hitting very catchy great hook yeah i think people are sleeping on this song and it's so good it's like such a bop I understand why it wasn't on Speak Now, just because, again, it sounds different, but I think that's the beauty of The Vault. She got to show us everything that didn't make the album just because it didn't fit with the rest of the songs, so I love it so much. Okay, we have made it to the top five, so get ready. I don't know if you've been keeping track of which songs are left, but these are some top tier vault songs. Coming in at number five, we have Message in a Bottle. I posted my entire reaction to the Red album. Actually, I actually have the reaction to every album on my channel, so if you want to go look at those, you can see, but our reaction, me and my friend's reaction to this song, we were just like speechless. We were so excited by the second or third chorus. We already were picking up on the words. Just like the feeling that that song gives me is just like pure serotonin. Again, cannot believe this was left off the Red album and I cannot believe we have gone this long without it. It's like one of those choruses that's like injected into my veins. I, I need this song. It just, the vibes are immaculate. I could dance to this song forever. And also the remix, a lot of people have different opinions about it. I love the remix. I want to hear this in the club. I want to hear this at the bar. If you want to like boost my mood, put this song on and I am just, I'm there. And I love the metaphor of like the message in a bottle because that's basically all of Taylor's songs. There are these little messages that she puts out into the world and doesn't necessarily ever really talk specifically about who they are for, who they are about. She's like, this is the best I can do to tell you how I feel about you. And I feel like that's literally every song that she writes. Okay, moving up number four, we have you're losing me from the midnight's vault and this is not officially released onto streaming platforms or anywhere to buy besides on the physical cd that taylor released at the metlife shows i was able to get a copy because i have the best subscribers ever one girl sent it to me and i am eternally grateful to have that cd so i have it downloaded as an mp3 in my notes app to listen to but i when we first heard this song me and my friends jaw on the floor Lyrically, this song is so good. Metaphorically, it took me many listens to get all of it into my brain and just understand like every little significant choice that she made in the production of this song, in the lyrics, just everything. Again, I think her actual heartbeat is in this song and the whole metaphor of like basically she's like a patient in the hospital that's like flatlining. The parallel of this relationship flatlining. And then the part where it's like she's saying you're losing me and then it's like silent and you can hear like a heartbeat. It's like chills. Absolutely chills. And then you get to the bridge and she just like drives it home. I feel like everybody felt this bridge. Like felt it. When I heard those words, and I wouldn't marry me either, I screamed. It took us like a good 30 minute dialogue to decide what she meant by that. I wouldn't marry me either being like, oh, I know how hard like it is to be with me because of my life. Like I would not want to marry me either. Or if it was something like tongue in cheek, like he didn't actually want to marry her and she was like being petty about it, kind of like calling him whoever out on that statement. Like, oh, I wouldn't marry me either. Like, you know, just kind of, I don't know, pathological people pleaser. And then the second part of the bridge, like, do something, babe, say something, move something, babe, risk something. <clears throat> I felt that. I don't relate to this song, and I haven't really been in a situation like that ever, but I felt it. And that is how you know it's a good song, because even if you can't relate to it, you feel it so deeply. And that's how I feel about this song. It was crazy that this, I was not expecting a Midnight's Vault song to ever be put out, so that's crazy. And it just makes me wonder, how big is this vault? Is there Christmas vault songs? Is there Folklore Evermore vault songs? Or what? Or was Evermore the vault songs of folklore? I don't know. I'm excited to eventually find out. Okay, moving up to my top three. My favorite song from the Speak Now vault, Timeless. I love this song so much. Literally teared up when I heard it the first time. It's so 
cute, but also like, I don't know how to explain it. It's kind of a bittersweet feeling, I think, because you can hear like how genuine she is. Taylor is one of the most hopeless romantic people ever. Obviously, she's written so many songs like this that are like very storyteller. This song is very similar to Starlight and Mary's song and You Were In Love and all of those kinds of songs where she's looking at love from the outside and very hopeful that one day she will be in that story. And so I think that's why it's very bittersweet like listening to it, but it's also very relatable and reassuring Assuring. Taylor is single and thriving right now, even though she hasn't necessarily found that yet. She is still hopeful, and that gives me hope. That exists. That, like, perfect love story. But I loved watching the lyric video with all the old photos. The lyrics are so cute. People are relating this to so many movies like The Notebook and Captain America from the Marvel movies. Like it's very much like that vibe. It's one thing if a song has a good melody and it's one thing if a song has a has good lyrics and good production and I feel like this song has it all. When you can have good lyrics and a good melody, I'm sold. Speak Now is my favorite Taylor Swift album. So favorite era, just everything about it. I'm really glad that she gave us this song after all this time. Okay, moving on to my top two. Number two is Better Man. I feel like me and this song have had a long journey ever since Little Big Town put this song out in 2016. This was probably one of my most listened to songs that year. So back in 2016, I was already Better Man's number one fan. Even though it wasn't even Taylor's voice singing it, because I knew she had written it, I was sold. I listened to that song so many times. And then in 2018, when I went to the Reputation tour in Nashville, that was the surprise song. And I remember just like losing my mind that she was gonna sing Better Man. Oh my God, I was so excited. I had been listening to this song for two straight years. And so when she announced that this was going to be in the Red Vault, I like almost cried of happiness. When I finally heard her version of it, it was the only version I listened to. I, st I stopped listening to Little Big Town version. Sorry, Little Big Town. But oh my God, this song. I think the note changes also improved the song for me and just hearing it in her voice, I felt like I reached a full circle moment the vibe, everything about it. Huge fan, huge Better Man fan. And so when she sang that it, at the show in Foxborough, I just, ugh, it was so bad. I was so upset. I just like, I remember I was like at dinner with my friend, her her favorite Taylor Swift song is, is Better Man. And so I'm like listening to it on my phone and I was like, and she was like, it better not be Better Man. I'm like, it's Better Man. <laughs> Oh, just like absolutely tragic. Um, but hey, she might play replay it. I don't know. Maybe eventually I'll hear it again. Yeah, Better Man definitely deserves that spot. And I think that song provides a lot of context to the Red Era. I think between this and All Too Well gave us like a full picture of the Red Era, the missing puzzle pieces, so to speak. So I am a Better Man stan, 113%. Okay. To nobody's surprise, at the very top of this list, we have All Too Well, 10 minute version from the vault, Taylor's version. All Too Well, 10 minute version is my most streamed song on Spotify of all time. <laughs> so that says a lot about me as a person, but it's so wild to me how I will never skip this song. If it comes on, I will not skip it. All 10 minutes, I will not skip it. I have friends who are like, yeah, I, get, I listen a little bit and then I just like get bored and change it. It's like too long. 10 minutes is too long. I'm like, no, 10 minutes is not long enough. I would listen to a 20 minute version. I would listen to a 30 minute version of this song. <laughs> I think this song is at the top for me just because it was a dream that never felt like it was going to be actualized. It had been an inside joke in the fandom for years. Ever since she had told somebody in Loft 89 during the 1989 world tour, they asked that she had mentioned there was a 10 minute version of All Too Well somewhere and they asked her where it was and she's like, I don't know, it's probably like lost in my house on a CD somewhere. And so it became a joke on Tumblr. They're like, Taylor, we can have a cleaning party. We'll come over, we'll help you clean, we'll help you find it so you can put it out. And it just was like, we're never gonna know. We're never gonna know what it sounds like. And so when she announced the Red Taylor's version and said at the very end, like, you never know, maybe one of them is 10 minutes long. 
screamed. I could not believe it. When we first heard this song, <laughs> just like our reaction to it was like screaming, rolling on the floor at one point, more screaming, speechlessness. Every stage of grief you could think about is what I went through. Anyways, it belongs at the top of every list. <laughs> One of the best songs Taylor has ever written. I just can't believe it got its moment in the spotlight, truly. I am eternally grateful that she plays it at every single era's show because I have a rule for myself that every time I see All Too Well, I am not allowed to record it and I just have to live in the moment the entire 10 minutes. I think the five minute version of All Too Well was one of my favorite Taylor Swift songs ever, but this version is the like, full circle how this song was supposed to be and so this beats out the five minute version every single time. I would much rather listen to a 10 minute song this version than a shorter song. It just like has just replaced it for me. <laughs> Some people might disagree with that but that is truly how I feel. That is my entire ranking of every single vault song Taylor has put out until now. I am sure that it will continue to change with new Taylor's versions coming out and maybe eventually I will do an updated video with all of the vault songs from every re-released album. I cannot wait for the rep vault and the 1989 vault. I think those are just going to like blow my mind. I don't know if I'll survive. But anyways, thank you for sitting here and listening to me talk forever. Again, I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on my ranking. Please be nice. And I also would like to hear your guys' rankings. So please comment that down below. Let me know what other videos you want to see from me. Um, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. This video is so long. I didn't know I could talk this long. Actually, I could talk about Taylor Swift for like four hours if you let me.